We're going to talk today about becoming comfortable with disabilities, and I have a wonderful guest on, Dave Reynolds. You've got to hear what he has done deliberately and intentionally so that he can become comfortable with people with disabilities. And you know what? It's helping him out more than it's helping them, even though he is serving them. So check out today's episode. If you are somebody who wants to feel better about yourself, if you want to feel more confident with everybody that you're with, and if you want to have your life matter, to have your life mean something, to be able to contribute to the lives of others, make sure you check out today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. We are talking about strategic beliefs and core stories and how we can really be more in control of our lives than we think we can. And specifically, uh, the topic today is really about becoming comfortable with people with disabilities. Now, I've got Dave Reynolds, Reynolds? Reynolds. Reynolds. Dave Reynolds on with, with us today. I met him at a Toastmasters meeting. I am learning to be a better speaker. If you've tuned in to some of the previous episodes, you're like, <laughs> yeah, you need it. But uh, I met him at this Toastmasters meeting and I just kind of, anyway, I found it online and it was something about dreamers. It was like, turn dreamers. And so I just kind of completed it, it, the phrase, like, turn dreamers into reality. Okay, yeah, this is going to be great. This is for entrepreneurs. <laughs> this, these are my people. And, uh, and in coming there, I find out that it's part of, uh, what, what is the network? It's kind of, they work with, yeah, it's a service. Yeah, adults with disabilities. They, they do a service for adults with disabilities. And it's this fantastic program where they help them to be, to speak, to speak in public, to you know, get rid of ums and ahs, to be confident, to be able to present, to be loud and confident. Anyway, it's just a remarkable program. And Dave was the Toastmaster or the president or, yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, so I met him there and I'm excited to have him share a little bit about why he joined that group, what he, what, you know, the value you find out, the value you give to it. And we'll just kind of talk about that subject. Yeah. That's Thank cool. Thank you, Scott. It's good to be with you. Uh, no, it was great to meet you at that Toastmasters. It's a little unique because typically you go to a Toastmasters group and, you know, there's a lot of professionals there and, you know, they're polished and usually they're wearing suits and ties or dressed up a little nicer and they're really trying to work on their speaking skills. And uh, this, this Toastmaster group is a little bit unique. So um, it turns out that I was doing commercial real estate mm -hmm. with trying to find this group some space and they had a Toastmasters group that they host and you have to understand that these adults are uh, adults with disabilities so they they have uh, different um, they either had trauma or they've been born with uh, different uh, types of disabilities that prevent them from speaking or they can't walk properly um, and so it's when you look at the group um, you know a lot of us see people with disabilities and we don't quite know what to say. We don't know how to interact with them. And yeah. I was, ner I've, you know, my nephew, actually my, my sister had twins uh, about 20 years ago. One of them passed away at childbirth and the other one that survived has, has had disabilities. He can't speak. He's had like 25 brain surgeries mm -hmm. um, and he's, he can sit up a little bit. Um, so, you know, I've had that in my family, but as I found myself interacting with different folks that had disabilities, um, I would just feel uncomfortable and I wouldn't mm -hmm. know what to say to them. And I felt awkward. And I think that's normal for a lot of us, especially, especially so. if we don't have family members or, or friends that might follow, fall in that category. And so as I had the opportunity to find space for these guys, they turn community services is an amazing group of people, they've been in business like 40 years, and they, they do these day programs that allow people with disabilities to get out of their homes, to be in a program where they learn scope, they learn art, they learn music, um, they, some of them actually work, they, they, they've actually created work opportunities for some of these folks. And um, so to me, they're, they're saints, they're angels that, that provide this service. Um, and it, it was a dad that had um, kids with disabilities that were really homebound and they couldn't 
provide any kind of um, meaningful life for them. And so they said, what can we do to help kids like our kids, you know, provide some real value and meaning in their lives? And so um, it, was, it was fantastic. And I thought, I want to be a part of this. Part of it was just, I wanted to be part of a toast. I wanted to learn how to speak better. Uh -huh. And so my friend Dave Hennessy, who you met, who runs the program at Turn, um, invited me to, uh, to, to explore it. And, and so I, I signed up and started going. And um, I went for about six months. And he, he, after about six months, he said, hey, Dave, um, I've been the president like twice in a row, and I'm not allowed to do it three times. When we need somebody, can you do it? And I said, sure. So I ended up being the president for them. And, um, and, and I thought, you know, this would be a great opportunity for me to get around people who I feel kind of uncomfortable with and get to know them. And what I found out is there are people just like you and I are, right? Um, sometimes they can't communicate very well. What's amazing to me is there's one guy, I don't know if you remembered him, um, I think Ivan was his name, he, he got up at the front and all he could do was point at letters, right? Oh, yeah, I and, know the one you're talking the, about. And the worker that he was with. He's super, he's like super sharp uh, yeah, inside, yeah. but he can't articulate he can't get, out. He can't, his output doesn't work. And so, yeah. and so she, but what was interesting is before he would spell the words, she would guess what it was. And so half, half the time, just by understanding the way he groaned or whatever, she was able to figure out what he was trying to say. And I thought that, that's an amazing skill. Not that I want to have that level of skill, but yeah. just the the fact that she was able to identify with him as a as a person. And so, what have you learned from them that helps you helps? And are you comfortable around them now, or do you still feel nervous? So or? you know, I'm 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 still learning to be comfortable. Um, I'm kind of introverted as a person anyway. So uh -huh. you, you know, even this this kind of interaction yeah. can you know. But, uh, which is funny, because I'm in commercial real estate, so, but what I found out is introverts sometimes, uh, you know, are in jobs like this, but you just never know that they're introverted people. Um, but, uh, no, I've certainly become much more comfortable, and it, it, I thought, you know, one way to just get over a fear of something is just to do it, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we overanalyze the power of that, yeah. you know, just, just jump in with both feet. I, I know that... You're, you're trying to do more speaking yourself, and it, it's a scary thing, right? Mm -hmm. The public speaking is one of those things that ranks up with, I'd rather die than speak in public. Yeah, death comes first. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, I, so I know you can kind of relate to that, but um, being able to just be around them and, and, um, and learn who they are and learn their stories, um, there's nothing but more powerful than finding out who somebody's about somebody's story and and uh, and once you find out their background you, you you figure out what they're about and you bond with them right and you say it's their story that's the big bond yeah. moment for you yeah that's cool I hadn't really considered yeah that. I mean there were people that would get up and do these Toastmasters uh, speaking and they couldn't really talk but they had this amazing video display and a uh, slideshow and they showed them at Disneyland, they showed them doing all kinds of different activities. One guy was driving race cars, you know, and you got to see their personalities come out and, uh, and find out exactly who they were. And so, you know, if, if I were giving any advice, I'd say if, if you're trying to feel comfortable around people with disabilities, just find ways to get involved. There's, there's plenty of opportunities in the community to, to get out and, and um, be more interactive. And it's a, it's a segment of the population that really deserves to uh, be recognized. One thing I like about this turn group is they actually have a Mr. Wonderful like pageant. Okay. So it's like, a, it's like they do it for guys and then they do, I think it's Mrs. Wonderful or Mrs. Gorgeous or something like that. And they do it once a year and they actually involve, um, like for the women they have uh, crowned uh, princesses from different you know cities or Miss Utah gets involved, and so they they get the the community really involved, and they do this pageant, and they they get up, they they speak, they they do the same thing you would in a, like a beauty pageant, and they crown them one person a year, and it is so touching, it's so so beautiful. 
That's um, cool. And uh, and it becomes a it's quite a, a, a event in the community. Um, so I was talking to my wife, telling her that we were going to talk about this subject, and she said something that just floored me. She's always full of wisdom. I married <laughs> <Wives>. way up, <laughs> but she said kind of an important point is that you know to not tell people that you can do anything you know a lot of times we fill pe fill people's minds with you know impossible dreams but the important thing is what you do matters so oh, you know yeah. as you're working with people whether they have disabilities or not you can do you know what you do matters and it matters to me and finding their story and learning about them and and really connecting with them as a real person seeing them with the value that they hold makes a difference yeah well, and you know, a lot of times we don't get that involved, right? A lot of times you see somebody getting on an elevator or you're passing them in the parking lot or something like that. And I think if I were to say, how would you interact with someone with disability? You know, obviously they wanted to be, tre they want to be treated like any other person. And um, a lot of times we look away or we, we just ignore, you know, we try, we try to avoid the, yeah. con the the confrontation and it's really we're not worried that we're going to make yeah. them uncomfortable and, 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 yeah. and exactly so i mean i just say look them in the eye smile and say hello how's your day and you know i mean treat them like you would anybody else and uh, i know that they would really appreciate it and uh, and you'll feel better about it too you know just I like don't it. avoid it so. so i hope that helps you uh I hope, you know, when you interact with people with disabilities, if you have people in your family, people that you meet in the community, I hope you do that because when you find out their story, when you find out what they're about, you treat them with equal value. What you're going to find is that is in alignment with who you are. You're going to feel better about yourself. Your confidence is going to grow. And you're going to be the best full version of yourself. So I hope that helps. Make sure you join us for another episode. And uh, thank you, Dave. Thanks for joining us. On Appreciate this. it. What do you think? You've heard our thoughts? Now let's hear yours. In the comment section below, share what impressions came to your mind. What did you get out of this? If you have had thoughts to take action, please do so. Always listen to your inner voice. It's your ultimate guidance system. Of course, the best place to take action is at scottwilhite.com because if you join me for a free web class, I will reward you by sending you my purpose planner so you can have a physical guide to help you get in touch with your inner guide. Your core story will serve you or shackle you. It's up to you. Choose your beliefs and pick your identity. It is choice, not chance, that determines your reality. See you next time.